all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to my channel um, okay um, now that we've gotten all the other things out of the way uh, it's time to show you what's going on with my R2200 uh, Motorola communication service analyzer uh, have it plugged in got it turned on I don't have the covers off nothing like that but let me show you what the thing looks like first this is it right here as you can see the intensity first off the scope is uh, is dead not working which I mean it is dead could be I have something disconnected I don't know I'll have to look at it but anyway anyway the service monitor here gener is uh, something that you use for uh, communication technicians that go out in the field I'm sorry that goes out in the field and, or, or, or in the shop that this thing will generate signals uh, RF signals up to uh, 1 gigahertz uh, it will do FM CW and AM uh, it's got a lot of different features here but the other thing that it does is it generates all the tones used for communication back in the day back in the 80s uh, PL uh, PL tone private line digital private line uh, tone A tone B which is adjustable you can change it much like you know I can go here but uh, let's see I remember how to do this press tone data I can press 3 3000 enter now tone a is three so on so forth a b tone in voice a b variable tone remote options depending on what you got in here uh this thing will do dvm it also has a built-in dvm and uh ac dc uh, dvm uh let's see what yours measured right here it'll measure uh, sign ad and distortion which is pretty cool uh, let's see, uh, this is where you enter all your data, you can, uh, frequency, tone data, deviation limit. Over here you can look at the frequency error, battery power, RF power, and RF level. Uh, this oscilloscope section right here, typical, uh, it's got your, your time base right here, your horizontal, horizontal and vertical centering. Uh, your, voltage on I mean, your deviation set or your voltage set depending on if you're using it for mod scope or you're using it for uh, regular oscilloscope of course that's how you select mod AC DC on the external vertical right here uh, your trigger level you know what trigger levels are oh the scope's off that's why it's not working uh, auto normal scope all so uh, then the monitor section here you got squelch uh, Lordy. Squelch, you know, volume control it tells you when it's on squelch. Image, high and low, and bandwidth, narrow and wide. You mod out. Oh, there's a scope. Let's see. Yeah, you can almost see it. You have to move it. That's how dim this thing is. Uh, here's the code synthesizer section right here. You can do continuous on burst. Uh, let's go back into tone data 8 and then I can turn this up there's your burst that's all it does you can plug a microphone into that uh, this will give you mod out and external mod in I could hook a I could hook my own tone generator into this thing or whatever into this external mod in and generate whatever I want to uh, let's see what else and then the RF section right here uh, here's your function switch uh, high gen uh, which generates out of this port here uh, then gen which generates out of this port power monitor which uh, which you plug in a radio into this up to 125 watts and it will tell you the power out and uh, then if you push frequency error it'll tell you what the frequency area is it'll give you the deviation and all that kind of stuff put it on sensor monitor now it comes on back over to this antenna and uh, allows you to monitor off the air or if you're working on a handy talkie or something like that you can uh, you know set this on uh, this is the attenuator by the way uh, this goes from 0 to minus 70 
Uh, so you can put that on minus 70, a little antenna there, key up a little portable, not right up to it, but key up a portable and you can look at all the particulars on that. So that's basically what it does. In the oscilloscope, you'll notice it's seven and a half right here. And this is graduated and uh, this is for uh, measuring uh, de you know, instantaneous deviation on the scope which corresponds to this right here. Uh, most uh, most radios that do, uh, this does 0 0.25 uh, kilohertz, 2.5 kilohertz, and 25 kilohertz. So uh, anyway, that's just a kind of a rough overview of how this thing works. Uh, so I'm going to shut you down a minute. I'm going to get my spectrum analyzer and I'll show you what's going on with this thing. Okay. Now I have uh, Big Bertha set up here, my 8568B spectrum analyzer. Uh, I'm set up for the center frequency of 100 megahertz, and let's see, I'm showing about minus 56 dBm, and I'm outputting about plus, I'm actually going to again, here we go. Yeah, about minus 50, that's showing about minus 49.2, that's fairly accurate. Anyway, let's see. I'm on 100 megahertz, I'm monitoring 100 megahertz, and I'm going to adjust the R vernier control from minimum to maximum. Watch this, this is minimum, this is maximum, okay? That's 100 megahertz. Okay, let's go to 200 megahertz. Okay, let's change the frequency. Okay, minimum, maximum, you'll see right there on the edge, a little bitty, little bit of harmonics coming in there. Watch this though, we're going to change it to 300 megahertz. Watch. Okay, looks normal there, right? Look at there. We ain't supposed to do that. Now yeah, watch what happens if I go down to 200 megahertz. Cleans the whistle. That's a little hot. Let's go back up to 300. See that? Well, nuts, isn't it? Now, just for grins and wiggles, I set up my uh, I set up my modulation meter I'm set up for five kilohertz okay now I'm going to I'm at 300 meg I'm gonna go down to 100 meg okay Set up for 100 meg, and I'm going to come over here. I'm going to turn the one kilohertz level up to plus or minus four kilohertz deviation. Come over here to the mod meter. I'm reading plus four. I mean, I'm sorry, four plus or minus five. I'm sorry, four kilohertz deviation. God, dang, how hard is it? Now, well, here's what happens when you go up to 300 meg. Watch this. And we'll turn it up. Look well, what the mod does. It's to a certain point where it goes into spurs. Look what the modulation does. It's nuts. It's not really raw modulation. 
it's just the spurs are generating so much the spurs is what's interfering with it if it's wasn't for the spurs this mod would be fine so that's the project uh, I've got the parts to fix it what I don't know I want to try something else that I didn't realize to just now I'm going to switch this back the RFN out is gives you um, a lower signal out than the hygiene does and uh, what I want to see is if I can get enough drive can't get enough drive to drive this. That's the problem. You know, wide open. I, I just can't get enough drive to drive this. But anyway, that's the problem. It goes, it's just, a, it just goes into spurs. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to try to fix that. Uh, by changing, putting the right components in that board, and we'll get all that apart here shortly. All right, I have it apart. This is the bottom side of the beast. I believe this is the module that I need to get into. This is the wide band module. See that little hole right there? That is not factory. Is somebody drilled that hole in there. Little bitty woodpeckers, I guess. Yeah, let me get this board cover off, and we'll whole board and I'll show you what is what I believe to be the problem alright this is the wideband module right here that is the wideband module basically that just means it'll amplify from I forget 30 megahertz I think is how low this thing will go all the way up to a gig that thing will do it that will go from that end to that up no, that thing will cover the full spectrum anyway you see this uh, part here and you see this part here these little MWAs this is an MWA 100 this is an MWA 100 I'm sorry SWAs uh, hey I'm missing three of them where could that go? Also, this it's not factory. That is a bodge. That is, I hate that word, but that is somebody's handiwork. So our mission, if we choose to accept it, is pull this out. Pull this modification crap out. And I'll show you the transistors once they get the board out. What they what they've got in there is amplifiers. I'll show you that here when they get a book they get the board out. Okay, there is the non Motorola field upgrades that I've replaced. A little small little Radio Shack looking thing here. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Like a thousand ohm miniature variable control and a 390 ohm resistor. Anyway, here is the wideband amp. All the splendid glory, and let's move the light over here a little bit, and I'll show you. There is the bodge, these little dudes. Those do not belong. So those are coming out next. I'm going to take all them out. I'm going to clean this board up. I'm going to make sure. I'm not sure about this tantalum cap right here. I'm going to have to look on the manual. But the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take these dudes out. Don't know what they are, but I know dang well it ain't working right. And that's not supposed to be in there. So I'll bring you back when I get to the next phase. All right, I have the board uh, finally got that transistors out. This one here did not want to come clean. That freaking little hole right there, that little alley, it did not want to come clean. I had to get Big Bertha out a whole of it. Anyway, I have them clean. I have them removed. Uh, didn't clean that side. I need to do that. Anyway, sorry about that. So, 
Everything's okay except for one little thing. A little boo boo. Where? Well, I lost it now. Oh, here it is, right there. I think that trace has been removed. But I'm going to have to look at the book to see. But there was a chip resistor right there in this tantalum cap was in there. I don't know if that's normal or not. I'm going to have to look. Uh, but anyway, I got it out. I'm going to inspect it a little bit, look at the manual, make sure everything's good. Put the three transistors in there and see what happens. I'll bring you back. All right, I have the transistors, uh, or the MMICs, as it's called, um, in there. They all appear to be real. This is a uh, MWA320, MWA330, and another MWA330. Uh, they have Motorola part numbers, the 51 dash, and I don't remember what they are. Uh, and it was. I had to do some digging online to find what the actual replacements were. Um, this one worries me a little bit. How, see how these are original ones here are kind of plain, 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 but that one's kind of thick. That one worries me. I can't see it. Anyway, uh, on this side here where that uh, chip resistor was and that uh, a tantalum cap that wasn't supposed to be in there matter of fact he had cut the lands open on the board right there and you see I kind of bodged it or, or joined it uh, in other words I run the uh, lead of the uh, output uh, the input lead over to this other side here and bridge the gap and put a little blob of solder on there I'm sure it's probably a upset the impedance just a little bit but I don't think it's gonna make that much of a difference so I'm gonna put the thing in and uh, and we're gonna Turn it over and hook it all back up and see what happens. You know, my philosophy on this kind of stuff, you know, I am no expert in electronics, first off. And I'm like, I know you guys are saying, some of you out there are saying, yeah, I can see that. But I have been doing this for 40 years. And I don't know everything about electronics. I mean, I'm, I was never an experimenter. Never was. It never interested me to be an experimenter. Believe it or not, I was uh, I was quite happy just repairing Bond Pa Kettle's television or their radio or something like that or occasional stereo or whatever. I wasn't into experimenting, so. Everything that I learned in vocational school, I kind of lost over the years. I got out of, I got out of radio and TV, and uh, went to work for a communication shop in the uh, down south. And yeah, I learned a lot there as far as RF goes and stuff. And I did get to work on a lot of stuff, but. A lot of things that I still didn't know about, but somebody, a dear friend of mine, told me something one time. He was not kind of my mentor, but he told me something that has stuck with me. I don't necessarily have to know how it works. I just need to know what is it supposed to do. Think about that. What is it supposed to do? If you know what it's supposed to do, you can per more than likely you can uh, figure out what it's why it isn't doing what it's supposed to do. That philosophy has been with me for over 40 years. And I have about a 99% success rate of repairing things. Okay, the board is in. The board is in. The wide bend board is in. So now we got to just put the shield on. Shields! Raise the shields. Sorry, sir. No operation. I ain't getting installed till Tuesday. 
Anyway, we're going to put the shield uh, screws in the shield. We'll turn this dude over, get it set up to. Uh... Oop, that don't go there. Where does this go? We'll get this thing set up to test. See if it goes up in a cloud of smoke. It'll work. Or one, one other thing that bothered me a few minutes ago I noticed, and I didn't notice this the other day, I thought it was kind of peculiar, is that when I switched from which from generate to high generate, I still had signal. I still had signal on that port, and you shouldn't have had signal on there. It should have switched that port off. The signal stayed the same. Something was not right there. I'm going to have to keep that in the back of my mind. But I have a feeling that we'll find out when we power it up. But I have a feeling that has something to do with the problem. And I have a feeling that Bosch, that Bodge, that, that dude, whoever it was, put on there, uh, had something to do with it. But as I was getting at a few minutes ago, don't have to know how it works sometimes. You just need to know what the hell is it supposed to do. And usually you can figure it out from there. If you if you're good at this stuff. There's some people that ain't good at this stuff. Anyway. There. Ready to roll. So I'm going to shut you off a minute and we'll hook all the test equipment back up, get everything set up. We'll try again. All right, here we go. I got the uh, spectrum analyzer running. I got it set up for 100 me uh, megahertz center frequency, uh, one megahertz frequency span. Uh, so I'm going to activate the device. Set this for 100 megahertz. I have a signal. I got worried there for a minute. About minus 64 dBm. Look at there. Minus 64 dBm. I'm going to flip this switch to high gen. I'm thinking that should have went away. Okay. We'll investigate that. Minus 47, I'm getting about minus 43. So let's go to, let's go ahead and do the acid test. Let's go to 300 megahertz. All right, frequency, three, 300 megahertz. Look at there. I can vary it, it varies up and down. Doesn't go in this. So let's go up to 800 megahertz. Eight hundred megahertz. Plain as a whistle. That's what I'm looking for. Now, see what the mod's doing. Look, Ma, no distortion. Now we have to set the mod. Turn the signal level up to where low light goes off. We'll set it for 4 kilohertz deviation. Look at there. 4 freaking kilohertz deviation. I have not seen it do that since I got it. 
Let's go down to 300 hertz. Still at 4 kilohertz deviation. Probably too much signal. There we go. There. Four kilohertz deviation. That is what it's supposed to do. So now, we'll have to probably do a calibration. Oh boy. Well, let's see. I'm on a minus 20, and I'm showing minus 8.3, so let's just set it for minus 20. Center frequency 300 megahertz. Turn the deviation on. Showing me about a minus 19. That's fairly close. Um, let's go up to 500 megahertz. About 18.9. Okay, let's go up to 800 megahertz. Marker showing about minus 31. That's what it's showing here. Back to over to 200. Minus 30, minus 32. The first one good. Let's go back to go to one. Wait, I can't do that. I'm gonna do 900. Come on, man. One gig. Center frequency, one gig. Minus 30. Look at that. That is a lot better. That is what it should do. So, now that I got that, I'm going to play around with it a little bit more and reevaluate it and uh, try to decide if I want to uh, calibrate the output section or not. So I'll bring you back when I make a decision. All right, I've uh, went down here and played with it a little bit across the band and everything. Right now I'm on the uh, generate section right here and uh, I've set it up for minus 60 uh, to generate a signal at 100 megahertz at minus 60 dBm. 100 megahertz at 60 dBm. Boy, I just cannot get my mind to tell to look at this view screen to tell me where I'm looking at. But anyway, my marker says minus 59.7. Of course, I'm going through. You know, there's going to be a little error. I mean, it's it's pretty much right on. Uh, let's go to frequency eight. 
hundred. Let's see what it does here. Still at minus sixty. Sixty point seven is fluctuating. Minus sixty. That is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, the hygiene is working. The mod seems to be good. Um, So now that I've got that, there's a thing or two that I'm thinking about doing, but if this mod's working, I'm going to go back through the alignment of this. Uh, I'm not going to bore you guys with that. I'm just going to go back through the alignment again, uh, a little more thorough than I did the first time, and probably troubleshoot the scope, but I've already checked the scope with my uh, tube tester and that's I mean my CRT tester and that CRT is weak it doesn't even give me cutoff voltage uh, so I'm trying to find one but in the meantime all I have to do is just hook my scope to this DMOD out right here and uh, I can calibrate it and uh, it'll do everything I want to do because this is going to be a bench bench uh, device anyway so it doesn't really matter to me uh, I'll find a I'll find a CRT for it one day. Anyway, uh, that was it. It was a successful operation. I'm happy. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna mess with it too much more. Uh, for what the money I paid for it, I think this thing's fine. I'm gonna go back through it again, and uh, I'm gonna go back through it again and re you know go back to the calibration and everything and. Uh, and go from there but anyway I'm gonna play with it a little bit see how well it works and all this kind of stuff and, and readjust a couple of things little minor things that bugs me and uh, anyway thanks for joining me uh, that's what I wanted to show you guys that what the problem was and what I found and what I did to repair it um, so anyway thanks for joining me and uh, we'll talk to y'all later bye bye <laughs> try again well guys um, I got the R2200 working uh, satisfactorily I uh, will say this that I didn't quite make clear I don't think I made clear is uh, is that this R2200 is uh, it's going to be for my bench uh, you know I'm going to work on you know I don't you know, I work on the FM stuff, you know, uh, you know, handheld, you know, a lot of Motorola radios and stuff like that, uh, you know, from time to time. And I've just wanted to service monitor for a long time, and I finally got one. Uh, the R2200 is not the high, big, the big dude like the IFRs and stuff like that that's got the, you know, the SSB capability and all that. But, you know, it was $800. Um, the, uh, I took, um, you know, after I turned the camera off and all that last night, uh, I went in and just went through the thing, uh, took my time, and the calibration is about as close as my test equipment on, that I'm using to calibrate it with will make it work. You know, it won't pass a uh, calibration certificate uh, inspection. Uh, it's, but it is close as my stuff will tell me and that's fine uh, my stuff is fairly accurate I trust it um, I did check the watt meter function of the thing and the watt meter function was you know within two percent yeah it's pretty good now, I've been rolling these things uh, to be a hundred percent accurate anyway but so you know and uh, going back to the uh, modulation issue there was two problems with this thing um, and somebody had been in the mod circuit you could tell somebody had been in the mod circuit you know twisting the control because the control is very wore out as far as the slot in top of it so that some uh, who knows what they were dicking around in there doing you know uh, however the board the modulation area of that uh, synthesizer the whole assembly is in a you know an RF uh, 
can, uh, can uh, uh, enclosure, I guess you'd say, with a million screws. It's got feed, circuit boards go through feed throughs and all this, and it's very hard to get in and out, and much less troubleshoot. You know, do circuit checks and waveform checks and all this stuff. Very hard, very very hard to get to. Uh, so I left the modulation. I changed one component in the modulation circuit, uh, which was very hard to get to. Uh, and I left it alone. But the other problem with the mod is even if you set it at, say, like I set it at 5 kilohertz at 100 megahertz, you know, uh, carrier frequency, as I found out after playing with it a little while, you know, and I was troubleshooting this thing, if I got above 250 megahertz, it, that's when it would start going crazy. And when I looked at it on my spectrum analyzer, it was just uh, going spurious. I mean, it was going from this to that. And when it does that, my mod monitor goes crazy. I mean, my uh, my modulation analyzer goes crazy because it's looking at all that other mod. And it's like I don't know what to do. It's all you know. So anyway, it was, it was really affecting it. So anyway, got to find out on the uh, wide band amplifier board that we pulled out and looked at. He had whoever did that. I, apparently, the guy I bought it from. Put all them Lord knows what the hell they are. Captain America looking little transistors had the big A's on them. It was not the right components. I uh, was able to source the correct components or what I believe to be the correct components uh, off of eBay. Uh, I didn't buy any Chinese crap. I bought some people in, that sells RF parts on you know on eBay. I trust them. So the components come in, I put them in, as you saw in the video, and uh, I just took that stupid modification that he did with that variable resistor and that resistor, took that out of the circuit, put it in like it was, it worked. You saw, you know, you saw what I saw. And um, it seems to track, it seems to do its job, it, you know, so I'm happy with it. You know, and that brings me to another thing that... Uh, Well, I guess I just ain't going to mention it, but I'm just, I was going to say something about, you know, the state of eBay and the state of the, you know, finding parts nowadays and, uh, you know, everybody getting into the uh, repair, you know, repair craze, you know, uh, you know, and when they do that, parts, uh, people say, oh, I got these parts and all these hi-fi guys might use or you know something else like that or even test equipment you know just like a just to know a RCA volt on this years ago used to go for ten dollars you look at them on eBay now and they're like a hundred dollars and or two hundred you know they want money for them and they people just real figured out hey people are buying this stuff we're gonna, we're gonna retire off this we sell enough so you know, prices are jacked up, and the so-called a lot of repair parts are, and, uh, you know, it's not it's the same world out there as it used to be. Uh, a lot of the stuff that is not kind of, you know, years ago I worked on this stuff, you know, back when I was doing television radio work that, uh, you know, if I needed a part, pick up the phone, call my distributor, hey, I'll have it there the next day, or if I was in town, I'd go, he'd bring it by, you know. Let me see you get a yoke for 1959 Zenith black and white television. No, still looking for one. It's not the same thing, but I enjoy working on this stuff. And, uh, and this, I can go back to the service monitor. Uh, the service monitor does work. Uh, it does do, it's close? It's calibrated as close as I can get to it. Uh, I'm not gonna send it off to get it repaired. I'm not repaired, but uh, not gonna send it off to get it calibrated. Uh, maybe I'll find somebody that does this for a living, calibrates these things. Maybe I'll send it to them one day. But for the test equipment that I've got, it is calibrated as close as my test equipment that I have, and I trust it. So it's close enough for me uh, for what I do. It will pass FCC. Now, if I'm used to the job I used to have, we had to, you know, worked on the radio. We had to check it out, put the freak mod and power. I had to write that down because that was an FCC requirement. So, but if I don't write that down on anything that I work on, then I'm not required to have that FCC certified. Because if you work on the stuff like that and you put that down, your test equipment has to be certified. You have to have calibration certificates to back your up. So anyway, for hobby use, 
it's fine. But uh, it was a fun little project. It was tough to work on this thing. Um, it, uh, it's, I like how it's constructed. It's well made. Uh, once you figure out what they're trying to do, um, okay, it makes sense. Yeah, it was a fun project, and uh, I probably shouldn't even added this segment. As a matter of fact, I had another segment similar to this, and I accidentally deleted it while I was producing it. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm not sure I can put this in here to bore y'all to death. But, hey, thanks, y'all, for watching. If you've made it this far, I do appreciate you making it this far. I would appreciate your likes and your comments. And anybody that's first on my channel here, please subscribe, because I promise I'll try to get some interesting stuff here. Uh, you know, I probably got one more project in the, you know, in you know coming up, and that'll be it for me for a while because it's getting that time of year that I've got to go on, move on, and do other things. So anyway, I'm going to end it here. I want to thank you guys so much for being here, and I want to thank you guys uh, more. You know, for you know, if you hit like, please, and um, and you know anybody like I said, subscribe to my channel. And, uh, and I do appreciate it. And I, uh, I'm running out of gas, so I will see you guys later. Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.